Hey guys, Jeremy here, and I just wanted to give my two cents about what's going on with the writer strike thing, mainly because one of my old videos, the Why Does Hollywood Keep Hiring Bad Writers, came up, and it's starting to get a little bit more traction with everything that's going on. That video was talking about the Rings of Power and how those absolute dunderheads who got hired to be the showrunners got their job, and also a little bit of criticism about The Witcher and honestly, guys, I'm trying to watch season three right now, and I might as well be clawing my eyes out. I am so bored watching it. I am doing photo editing while watching it, and I'm bored. Because they keep talking about the goddamn politics shit that no one cares about. All I want to do is just want to watch it just to see where Henry Cavill leaves. And that's it. I'll never watch season four, if that's even if that even happens. There is this divide right now is about the whole writer strike and whether they are right to be asking for fairer pay and whatnot despite the fact that there have been a bit of duds here and there for the last little while and my thing is it is a disparaging amount of greed that the studios have despite the fact that they have made bomb after bomb after bomb in the last little while uh bob Iger still making like 23 25 million and i know that maybe this is a bit of a media divide and media difference i i understand that but one thing i can compare to is that the ceo of nintendo i read somewhere that he got like four or five million the the ceo of nintendo that was his yearly salary or something whereas if you look at bobby kodak the ceo of activision blizzard he got something odd like 70 million and it's just the idea of greed particularly in the united states in canada too but really just the Hollywood L.A. greed is absolutely barbaric. And I do feel that the writers have rights to ask for it. And also uh, a lot, it, it connects to the studios too, because now that they've gotten into this damage control shit of their streaming services, they all dove into this so hard that they have now created a chasm that is enveloping themselves paramount is striking shows like there was that recent uh, grease what was it the ballad of the pink ladies or whatever i heard it wasn't that great okay whatever but i feel bad for everyone who worked on it because not even a couple of weeks or was it a month or so after the show was completed like the first season canceled they struck it from the record there's going to be no physical version of it this show will literally not exist on any plane. And that's what some people for Final Space are really scared about. Once Netflix's contract with showing it ends, it's gone. It is gone forever. We will literally have to go back to the days of what honestly has never really left, of torrenting to get that show back so we can watch it because there's no fucking physical version of it. I have searched for one. Of season one and two, and I, I missed the train on those. So when studios do shit like this, of course you're going to have some sympathy for the writers and the people who work on these projects, because these studios, they do such knee-jerk reactions. Warner Brothers is a massive example of it. Look back at when everything was going on with COVID, and they did the HBO thing like, okay, everything is going to come out in theaters and HBO Max at the same time. And no wonder they lost Christopher Nolan. Because Nolan's like, are you fucking serious? Are you mental? Um, and th they have suffered hardcore for that. Warner Brothers in general is a fantastic example of watching someone do an Uno reverse to themselves. If you go back to 2001 to 2012, they were the absolute kings of cinema with Harry Potter, uh, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. They were just banging out movies. And then Man of Steel came out, and then it started to turn. And in the last 10 years, they have made the complete opposite in terms of how they <laughs> viewed themselves. They're a fucking joke now. And these guys want to try and have this say over what's going on. And again, there's just very little sympathy for me on the studio's side, especially when that one interview came out where they said that they're just going to be waiting until they run out of money so they have to come back for their jobs. Some of these guys were getting checks of like 60 bucks. You can't fucking live off of that. So, I don't know. I know that the actors' uh, strike is overshadowing the writers, which 
Now, that's a little bit of a difference. The reason why the actors one is happening is for good reason. It is for AI, which I knew some people said, nah, they're not going to do it. It's like, absolutely, they're going to. If there is a way that they can hire a machine to do a human's job and have it to pay less people, absolutely, they'll do it. And it's so much a bad idea because that's how people get their fucking start is background. They've already admitted that they did it for uh, WandaVision. I, and it, they definitely did it for Rings of Power to the point where people were pointing out the same fucking people were in different spots at the same time. So when you are removing the means of getting actors into movies through background work, that's going to be absolutely mental. I'm not saying that many background actors are going to be the next Timothy Chalamet and whatnot. Uh, to be honest, a lot of background actors don't know how to park their cars. This is all from personal experience. But you still need to have physical people because that is how you get physical main leading actors. So coming back again to the writers thing, has there been some absolute dirty duds in the last little while? Absolutely. I still am amazed that some people still try to defend Obi-Wan, despite it being one of the worst shows I've seen in recent memory. And I know that it's a bit of a, har of a harsh criticism, but honestly, every time I think about it, it just gets worse and worse and worse. There are people, multiple people, who have gone out of their way to make that show better than the actual fucking studios did. And... I don't know why we even come up with these excuses. There are some people who are like, oh, it's okay. It's like, no, no, we have limits. We have an expectation for decent storytelling. We have expectation for decent character drama. We have expectation for being entertained by something besides the fact of what its IP is. Its IP is not the reason why we are wholly watching it. It is a reason why, sure. But it is not the core drive. And that is why anyone who has said anything somewhat positive or even defensatory against any of the shitty fucking movies that have come out in the last while. The Flash. Ant-Man 3. Indiana Jones. Honestly, I, I don't know how certain people thought that movie was better than Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Because at least I didn't fall a fucking sleep watching Mission Impossible. I am super kind of in this realm where it's not the writers who in general who are in an issue right now it is the rooms that hire these writers it is the producers that find these people and hire them if you look at a lot of the writers for the season three of the witcher a lot of them and you look at what their their previous works were they're all writing assistants and Again, it leads me back to what I said in that video. It's not who you are. It's not what you write. It's who you know, first and foremost. And while, yes, that does work, that does lead some people to get some amazing jobs, some amazing careers, that should not be the fucking case all the fucking time. Unfortunately, it is. And that's how it is in the film industry. It's not even based on your skill. Sometimes it's just based on how well you get along and how much your silver tongue can get you. And that, while yes, is an asset and it is something that you should have, you should have decent human speaking skills. It shouldn't be the reason why you get your job in the first place. I guarantee you that's how the fucking guy who got the showrunner duties for Obi Wan did. Because that motherfucker had written Army of the Dead and that movie's awful. That's definitely how those fucking dipshits who run the Rings of Power got it. They were literally J.J. Abrams' bootlicker. They had no actual writing credit under their IMDb before getting Rings of Power. So, again, it comes back to not all of the writers are hacks. Are there more hacks now than there were before? Absolutely, but that's because we're also producing more content than we ever were before. We're at a point now where maybe five times might be a little bit overzealous, but we're definitely getting four times as much content as we were than what we got 10 years ago. It's bonkers. Remember when 
House of Cards used to be the big thing. House of Cards and Orange is the New Black. Those were the big things that Netflix was producing. And now Netflix produces so many fucking things now that it's impossible to keep up. I actually remember I used to keep track of the Netflix original movies that were coming out. Mainly because usually they were always bad or disappointing. Uh, there was like one or two gems that would come out here and there. But now it's a fucking waterfall. So when you have that much content coming out and that much of a, a expectation to produce, the turnaround time on some of these projects is bonkers. Stuff would used to take two years is now coming out in less than a year. The very fact that I worked on the Fall of House of Usher, the last project that Mike Flanagan did for Netflix, we finished shooting that in July. Hell, I even think it was June. No, it was June or July of last year. And I haven't heard a fucking word about it. Nothing. Now, admittedly, the separation between Netflix and Flanagan seems to have been a little bit... <laughs> but also Flanagan got offered to go and do The Dark Tower for Amazon. So I don't blame him on that. But... Like, that's bonkers. I, I'm amazed it's taken that long. Um, so that is something I think we've put ourselves into the situation is where we just keep expecting new thing, nothing, uh, this, this, this. We want, we want, we want, we want. We're so acclimatized now to wanting and expecting things to come out quickly that we don't actually let them stew. And that might be... That, honestly, that might be an excuse for certain projects and why they've kind of sucked. The fact that certain shows, particularly The Mandalorian, the fact that that fucker comes out almost every other year, like the first two seasons were year to year, then Book of Boba, then Mandalorian season three. The fact that that show was as good as it was that quickly is a testament to John, John Favreau's uh, storytelling and also to Dave Ione's overseeing. Yes, season three is a mess, but also... From what I've gathered, there was some studio exec interference. Like, um, I can't confirm this, but I have heard that Kathleen Kennedy really wanted to input some stuff into that season to try and try and make The Rise of Skywalker make sense because they're really, really dead set on trying to make that Ray movie. Long story short, I feel that the writers are justified in asking for fair pay. Anyone who does a job should be entitled to fair pay. I feel that the studios have gotten to a sense of greed and ill-conceived decision-making that they're a joke. How many franchise attempts have we seen in the last seven years? I can count about six that blew up in their funking face and us, as the regular viewing audience, could have told you that was going to happen. I know that they tried it with the Dark Universe, obviously. I know that they tried it with the Terminator tra franchise. I know that they tried it with the Transformers movies. And now, look at Mattel. They're going to try and do this with the fucking Barbie movie. Like, they're wanting to make a toy, what was it, Hot Wheels and all this other shit. It's like, do you guys not fucking learn? We go to see movies that we want to see, not because of what they are. Again... Yes, a little bit of the side factor to it, but we want to see a movie because we want to see a good movie. Anyways, guys, that's my rant. I hope you guys enjoyed me blah, 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 for a little bit there. Let me know what you guys thought about this. What are you guys thinking? Are you on the side of the writers? Are you on the side of the studios? Where are you in this conversation, in this debate right now? I'm really interested to see what the comment section will be. 